Hey guys, got a uh, new little flashlight that I want to share with you. This is from Next Torch. The model is the TA20. It's been out for maybe two months or so now at this point, uh, but I figured we'd do a quick unboxing, kind of go over all the features and specifications, uh, see what the light's all about, and give some thoughts on it. So as we can see, it's got a thousand uh, lumens for the output. It's an everyday carry flashlight. Uh, it's got multiple modes. We'll go over all that kind of stuff. Very compact. Uses a 16340 battery or a CR123A. And we'll see if the outputs are the same uh, with those batteries. I'm not sure if they are. Sometimes the uh, one can be brighter than the other, but we'll see. So it's got a tactical mode, a duty mode, and you can also lock it out. And it'll show you your different outputs there. We'll go over all that stuff in detail. It does have this little uh, like tactical ring, um, but I don't think it's included in this box. Uh, we'll figure out once we get it open, but I don't think it does. Uh, it's got some window or glass breakers built into the bezel there. It's running an Osram P9 LED. Um, see the dimensions here. I'll get you those in uh, inches here in a bit. And the weight is 3.14 ounces without the battery. And there is the other side. So let's get it open. We'll see what all comes in it. The box is empty there. So in here, it looks like we have a charging cable, uh, which is a USB A to USB C. There's a lanyard and then the uh, instructions. I don't see any type of extra O-rings right now, but here's the manual. It looks like it's probably going to be in multiple languages, as thick as it is, but we'll see. So yeah, there's English on this side, some other languages there, and a bunch more languages. Uh, so there are some illustrations and stuff as well and talks about charging and all that stuff. Um, so then we get the light here. And this is just telling us that there's like a little plastic or paper film insulator uh, over top of the battery to prevent it from coming on during shipping and that we need to remove that. So here is the light itself. As you can see, it is very small. Get you guys some close-ups here so you can see what everything looks like. The machining on it and the finish are excellent. It has like this ribbing up here along the head of the light. Some grip back here, some texturing. Uh, it did have a pocket clip on it as well, so that's included. And it looks like your lanyard would connect right there. Hook it there. And then this is pretty unique about this light. It's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to take a look at it. So basically you have like a tactical mode, a duty mode and a lockout and you just turn this. It's like, if you want to lock it out, you just turn that. If you want to be on duty mode, pretty unique feature. Uh, it's got, I believe it's a rubberized button, but it's actually kind of hard. It's almost like a plastic feel to it. We'll have to see what that feels like whenever we start uh, testing it here. But just want to give you guys close-ups of what this thing looks like. Looks like it tells you which way the battery is going to go in. So yeah, overall, pretty sweet. There's those little glass breakers right there. And it would also, whenever you set it down, uh, it's crenulated so you can still see the light coming out of it. I did want to quickly show you some of these specs again. Um, it looks like our output in tactical mode is a thousand lumens and the strobe is also a thousand. Um, in duty mode, it looks like it is a thousand on high, 190 on medium and 24 on low. Strobe is still a thousand. Um, 
It doesn't give run times on the tactical, um, so it must be it's only on when we push the button. Uh, so it's like a temporary on. Um, over here, there's no way that that lasts at a thousand lumens for an hour and fifteen minutes, um, constantly like that. So I'm not the light will stay on the entire time, but it's not going to be at a thousand lumens. It has to drop down after a minute or two because these lights are too small to to maintain that that type of output. Um, I do not know what it drops down to. So we have a two meter impact resistance um, and it's submersible to two meters. So it's IPX8 waterproof rating. And it's constructed out of aluminum alloy. So this little light here has been one of my EDC lights and it's pretty much been on my belt every day for the last few months. And I kind of was wanting to look at this next torch because I don't really care for the lockout on this one. It's a great light, but I, I was using it for something a couple months ago and actually forgot to put it in lockout and got in the car, was driving about 35 minutes. And I know more than got in the car that I started feeling a pain on my side and I had turned this on and it basically burnt through that and was burning through my side. And this is the one that it has a lockout where you basically have to hit it four times. It's like right now it's in lockout, so it won't stay on. So every time you hit that, it just does that. But that particular day I had it like this here and this thing must have got hit like this here. And then that came on, on one of the higher settings and absolutely torched me. And even though it only takes a couple seconds, I hate having to hit this that many times to get it back in the lockout. All right, let's get this tail cap off and then we'll remove that little insulating film right there. That's what we had to remove. And while we get this out, I'll show you guys the battery. So that's where the USB-C will plug into. And then obviously the other end just goes into a wall adapter or computer or whatever. So there's your battery. 16,340, 800 milliamp hours. I don't know if, so there is a little window right there. So that's probably a, a charge indicator. Um, it's probably like red when it's charging and then green when it's charged. I'll confirm that in the manual here in a minute. That is a red light when charging, blue light when fully charged. All right, so let's go over the different modes and the user interface. So it's in lock right now. So obviously if I hit this, nothing happens. That's what it's supposed to do when you lock it out. Okay, the next one over is duty mode. There's basically two different ways that you can do this. You can do a momentary press where you just lightly press in on the rear. Um, and it's going to probably come on in the high every time, uh, which is a thousand lumens. And you can see that is very, very bright. Um, now I can leave this on here too in this duty mode. I just press in a little bit harder and then it stays on there for me. And now if I lightly press, it's going to go through the different outputs. Uh, so that would be our medium, uh, which I think was what, 190 lumens? Yeah, 190. And then we have low, uh, which is 24 lumens. Now it does go into a strobe mode after this. So you're going to have high, medium, low, strobe, and then back to high. And it just continues the cycle through that. And let's shut it off in one of the lower outputs. So right there, I'm going to shut it off now. And when I turn it back on, we'll see if it's on high or if it stayed in that low. We'll give it just a couple seconds and then let's turn it back on. And yeah, it does come back on in the high every time. And so some people won't like that option that there is no mode memory and you have to cycle through. Like if you want the low, you've got to hit it multiple times to get there. And here's the strobe again there now you can shut it off at, at any output like if you're on high you can just shut it off on high you know if you're on medium you can shut it off at medium 
but it's going to come back on high every single time. And the other thing is you cannot get to those lower outputs when you're on the, the duty without actually turning it on. Like if I, if I want to press this two or three times to get to the, like the mediums or the lows, it will not. Every time I press it, it just comes on the high setting. So you do have to click it on and then you can cycle through the outputs. And our other setting is this tactical mode. Um, and then when you're in this setting, there is no way to have a constant on. You either have momentary turbo or 1,000 lumens or momentary strobe at 1,000 lumens. So when you press this lightly, you're going to get your high output there. And when you continue to press harder, you get strobe. When you let off, the whole thing shuts off. And it's the same thing if you're in like the turbo and you let off, it shuts off. But there is no way to keep it on on this setting. Even if you press like really hard, it just gives you strobe. So you have half press is your thousand lumens. Full press is your strobe. Like that is it for the modes. Like it's a very simple light, but I absolutely love this design up here. I will probably personally keep it in this tactical mode um i know it has a lock but if this button is hit like accidentally it's only going to flash for a second you know it would take something like that was pressed up against it and staying up against it um for a long time for that to stay on like that you know like if you're putting your seatbelt on and this happens to get hit it will shut right back off as soon as there's no pressure on it so this is probably the mode that i'm going to keep it on so then I can do the turbo and then also the strobe right from here. Um, if it doesn't work out for me, then I'll flip it over to that lock. And then it obviously won't work at all. So before we get to the nighttime shots, I did want to say that Next Torch did send me this little holster um, that's supposed to go with this. So I figured we'd do a real quick unboxing on it and kind of see what it's about. I likely will not use it. Um, it's probably going to be too big and too bulky for what I personally like. And that looks huge. That almost doesn't even look like it goes with this light. I'm sure this is supposed to go like that. Yeah, this definitely looks like this fits a much larger light. I mean, you put that down in there, it's, it's hard to even get this back out now. Um, so I don't know if I would recommend this holster for it. It looks like it's probably for much larger lights and as i'm looking over the box it says it's designed for the ta30 and what i have is the ta20 i think the 30 is like a 21700 light so that, that definitely is much larger and yeah it shows a, a fairly good size light that's in there but they did send it so i'll show it to you here real quick but I would not use it for this TA-20. I won't spend much time on this because it's not going to work for me, but just to show you guys here, uh, you pull down on this to lift that up. And then let's say that you have a one and a half inch belt. Well, you can slide this up to whatever that width is. If you've got a 1.75 or you know, whatever, you can slide that to lock it in place. Um, and then up here, you can pull this thing and rotate this to whatever position you like to wear it. It's like if you like your light at an angle or whatever, you can do that. And then you just push it in there and then it locks it back in place. But again, that's the V31, probably meant for larger flashlights. So I looked all through the manual regarding the CR123A batteries. And I couldn't find anything that gave different output numbers. So I assume that... Uh, on the high setting, it should be 1,000. On the medium, it should be 190. On the low, it should be 24. Um, these types of batteries here have a lot more capacity. Like this one's over 1,500 milliamp hours uh, versus the included uh, one that was 800. Now, the disadvantage is if you run these is once it's dead, you got to buy another one and put in it. But let's put it in and make sure that it's going to work. I would assume that it would, but yep, there we go. And it stays on. You can cycle through the different modes. 
strobe. Make sure that, that setting works. Everything seems fine with the CR123As. All right, I'll try to give you guys an idea of what the TA20 looks like inside. Keep in mind I'm recording with an iPhone, so it's much brighter in person when it shows on the camera. Here's the highest setting. Then medium. Low. and the strobe inside. And then back to the high. All right, this is the same corner I usually will record from. I'm about 30 feet from this wall. There is a light on over here, but we'll still see what this looks like. So again, the camera is adjusting some. That's on the highest setting. We'll go down one that's the medium 190 that's the low setting the 24 and then the strobe get the, the focus there we go and then back up to the high and then we'll shut her off and this corner I'm about 50 feet away we'll put it on the high here That's the medium, that's the low, and strobe. And give you one more example, go up into this tree here. So as you can see, it kind of lights up the entire tree. It does have a, a spot, but it's, it's more of a flood light on that. We'll go over here to this other tree. You can even see them across the street there. Those are probably 150 feet away or so. Hey guys, while I'm out to range today, I figured I'd show you a couple techniques uh, shooting using a handheld flashlight. Um, for my EDC light, I always like to carry something that has a, a rear tail switch. And I like something that can be just a momentary on. So I just push that rear tail and when I let off, it lets off. Um, so the first technique is just called the FBI technique. And it's where you have your pistol in one hand and you can either be above your shoulder with the light or but your neck with the light. Uh, either way, it's your hands are independent of each other. And I'll show you some of these techniques while I'm actually shooting here in a minute as well. The second technique uh, it's called the syringe or the cigar. So you basically will hold the light like this here. And then you kind of will place it almost in like the pad of your hand. And then you can bring your hands together. And then now you can use just the pad of your hand. So you kind of pull on the light. But you have some grip with both hands this way. And the third way that I know of is called the uh, uh, Harry's technique. And it's a traditional like grip like this here. And this is what you see in a lot of movies and stuff where somebody's like this here. Um, what I'd like to recommend though is putting both hands together. It definitely gives you a lot more stability with your shooting hand when the backs of your hands are touching each other versus like this, what you see in the movies a lot of times. So, Bring the hands together like this. Well, hopefully seeing those nighttime shots and then a little bit of stuff at the range were helpful for you. So I've been using the TA-20 for probably like around three weeks or so now. 
And overall, I really like it. I love the lockout. I, I love this twist design up here and how easy and fast it is. Um, I will say, I wish that like on the duty mode that it had like mode memory. I rarely use this thousand lumen highest output. And I typically use that medium, which is 190. Um, I wish that I could turn it off there at that setting. And then when I turn it back on, it was at the 190, but I had to flip through each time to get to it. It's not a huge deal. It only takes a split second. Um, like in the tactical mode, I think it would be fine to, to keep that thousand only. Um, but I do wish that somehow they could program that to where it would come on in whatever mode or setting that you had it at. So if I always use that really low setting and I shut it off, I'd like to have that low setting come back, but that's not a feature it has. So besides the mode memory, something that I would personally like to see is a much deeper pocket or carry clip here. Um, so basically as it is right now, all of this sticks out of your pocket. And I would like to see this come up a whole lot more and possibly even be like a two-way clip. So you could wear it on a hat if you wanted to. The light is pretty small and pretty lightweight. So I'd like to see something you know along those lines where you don't have nearly as much sticking out of your pocket. Another thing I'll let you guys know about is basically there's almost no heat sinking cuts or anything like that on it. So it does get very hot when you have it on that highest mode. Um, really after about 20, 30 seconds, uh, you really start feeling the heat and it's the whole body. The head gets super hot, uh, but even up around here, it's pretty warm. I did reach out to Next Torch and basically told them that this does not seem like it fits down in here correctly. And what they told me was that it basically needs this thing here. It's called the FR1. It's a tactical flashlight ring that goes over this. Um, and this is the correct holster that they recommend for it. Uh, and with this thing here, uh, it basically slides down into that holster the right way. They also have a couple other accessories, but, but the holster is correct for it. But the ring kind of allows you to easily slide that in and out of there. And on their website, it almost makes you think that it comes with it because all of the pictures up here kind of show it with it, but it does not. Um, and there is a separate charge of $10. If you would want that tactical ring, you'd have to add it onto a package. Um, I will say, so the, the light itself is $90 and then that ring was 10. So it's a hundred dollars basically. Um, and then it looks like they have an Amazon store and it's the same price on there and it does include that FR1 and I'll leave links to that down below. But overall, I think it's a sweet little light. It's built really well with quality components. You can use multiple different battery types with it. It's got multiple brightness levels for your EDC tasks, or you can put it over into that tactical mode and use it as a self-defense light. And I just think that this rotating mode head up here is just very ingenious that you can go from lockout to tactical literally in a split second. I mean, it's just that fast. So I really like that a lot. But yeah, that's going to be it on this one, guys. If you get any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.